Kingdom Life family and friends, how are you this morning? You know, year 2021 is the year of growth. At the beginning of this year, I have shared with the church, our goal this year is to grow. Grow individually as a Christian. Also grow the church. Now, when we come to the topic of spiritual growth, some Christians, they have some misconceptions. Some people think, as long as I join a church, I will grow. Not necessarily, because the church cannot cause you to grow. While some Christians, they think, well, if I've been a Christian for a long time, I will mature. Again, that is not necessarily the case, because you can be an old Christian, but also an aged Christian. Doesn't mean that you will grow to maturity. And some people think, well, if I come to church every Sunday and listen to sufficient messages, I'll, I'll grow and mature. Again, that is not necessarily the case because people tend to forget. How long can you remember a message? So, how can we grow to spiritual maturity? This morning, I want to share with you <clears throat> on this very important issue. How to grow deep in Christ. Now, but before I do that, perhaps I, we, we want to define the criteria of spiritual maturity. What do we mean by mature? Because unless we define it, unless we understand it clearly, we don't know where we go. But once we understand what's meant by spiritual maturity, then we have a goal to achieve. We have goals to reach. Make sense to you? Now, so, <clears throat> I will use a fruit tree as an example. Let's say we plant a fruit tree. We begin in a small seedling, right? We plant it and we water it, and over time, it grows into a fully grown fruit tree. Now, what would you see as evidence of growth? When a fruit tree is fully grown, it will begin to bear fruit, isn't it? Now, in the same way, in the same way, when a Christian grows to maturity, he or she will bear fruit. Now, in the Bible, it mentioned two kinds of fruit. The first is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As you read the Bible in the book of Galatians, it mentions nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, basically, these are Christ-like characters demonstrated in the life of a Christian. When a Christian is mature, he or she would, would, would demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Spirit in his life, in her life. So this is the one of the signs of spiritual maturity. Now, the other fruit mentioned in the Bible is called the fruit of the gospel. Now, meaning a mature Christian will have the heart for lost souls. He or she would want, without people telling them, to reach people for Christ because God has put the Father's heart in their, in their hearts. So, with these two fruits, you know and people around will also know a Christian has matured. Now, question, why should a Christian grow to mat uh, spiritual maturity? Can I just remain um, status quo? Now, in fact, there are two main reasons that you and I should grow spiritually. Because firstly, when Christians grow, God is glorified. In John 15, uh, chapter 15 and verse 8, that Jesus said, when his disciples grow to maturity and bear much fruit, God is glorified. And people know they are Jesus' disciples. So when you and I grow to maturity, God is glorified. Because that's an evidence that you and I have followed Jesus. And when you follow Jesus, when you abide in him, you will grow. That's the first reason why we should grow. In order to glorify God. Now, secondly, 
when Christians grow and mature, they will become a blessing to others. Baby Christians, they only come to take. Mature Christians, they give. And you know and I know, we live in this world not for ourselves but for others. But how can we bless others unless you are mature? Now, we need many, many mature Christians in the body of Christ because there's so much need around us. So this is why you should be, it should be your desire, my desire to grow as a Christian. Now, so how can we grow as a Christian? This morning, I want to share with you three important keys for us to grow as a, a Christian. Three important keys of a spiritual growth. Use them. Use them wisely. You will grow as a Christian. So listen very carefully to me. The three keys for spiritual growth. The first key, desire. As I just mentioned, desire. Now, the fact is, if you don't want to grow, nobody can force you. If you want to remain status quo as a Christian, and nothing will happen to you, and um, people can and will remain as a Christian, as a baby Christian, after 10 years, after 20, even after 20 years of becoming a Christian, if they do nothing, nothing will happen to them. Now, so you see, you see, and um, we, you must have a desire to grow because nobody, nobody can force you to grow. And you alone have to make this decision yourself, a desire to grow and mature as a Christian. That's the first key. The desire must be there. So my question to you this morning is, do you decide to grow to maturity? Second key, diligence. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Paul told his spiritual Timothy this. He says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now here, Apostle Paul admonished Tim uh, Timothy to be diligent to the Lord in order to grow. Now, to grow uh, spiritually, you need to build the spirit man within you. Now, this spirit man is the new man God has put in you the day that you were born again. Like a baby, this spirit man has to be nurtured, has to be fed in order to grow to an adult spirit man. You get the picture? Now, like a baby, you have to feed this as a spirit man in order for the spirit man to grow. Now, how do you feed the spirit man with? What do you feed him, the spirit man with? The word and the spirit. You build the spirit man with the word and the spirit. Now, with what? With example, you have to learn to do quiet time. That's the word. You've learned to read and study the Bible. That's the word. You have to learn to how to pray to God in the spirit. You learn to worship God and you've learned to serve God. Now, these are the ingredients that you feed the spirit man with. And over time, the spirit man will grow to maturity. Now, obviously, you know that they require hard working. They require a long-term commitment if you want to grow in the uh, spirit man. Now, this is where diligence comes in. That means you've got to work hard. You need to be serious. You need to commit to this worthy cause, the growing process of your spirit man. Now, commitment means time, isn't it? You want to commit something, you've got to spend time on it. Now, the question is, are you willing to commit yourself to grow to maturity? It requires a lot of hard work. It requires diligence. I think the issue boils down to the value. How important is spiritual maturity to you? I think that would determine the level of your commitment, isn't it? If you think it's so important, you will devote time to it. So again, you alone, 
can answer this question. Whether you want to be diligent or not, whether you want to be serious with God or not, whether you want to grow to maturity or not, no one can make this decision for you. Now, so you see, to grow to spiritual maturity, the first key is you must have the desire to grow. No one can force that. Secondly, you must be diligent to grow. You've got to put in work. You've got to put in commitment. You've got to put in time. Now, the third key for spiritual growth or spiritual maturity is discipline. Discipline. Now, the examples which I just quoted you, like the quiet time, the word, the prayers, worship, and service, they are called spiritual disciplines because they require strict disciplines. Now, so it's not you just do it when you feel like doing it. When you don't feel like doing it, you just drop it. It will never work. You need to have a discipline. You require a high level of discipline. Not just to learn. More importantly is you need to put into practice what you have learned. Now, some, some Christians, they think, oh, well, I, 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 I can learn a lot of things, read the Bible, read the uh, other spiritual books. I can grow and mature. Now, not necessarily. Because spiritual growth is not just, just through learning. If you just learn and do nothing, they would just be head knowledge there. It's not going to help you much. Now, so this is why the Bible says we must be a doer of the word, not just hearers. Now, listen to what the book of James tells us on this. I read to you from our chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Now, listen carefully. But be doer of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man looking, observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who does, sorry, but he who looks into the a perfect law of liberty, and continuous in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Now, so you see, you will see, here the Bible describes people who just hear the word and do nothing. It's like someone who is looking at the mirror on himself. He finds that on his face there are lots of dirt, but he went away. Now, so what happened? The dirt remains, meaning nothing has changed. So you see, this is so important that whatever you and I have learned, we have to put that into practice. I cannot say more on this, the importance of this. Don't just be a hearer of the word. We need to put them into practice because as you hear, you tend to forget, but when you practice it, it becomes yours. You get my point? How many people can remember the message preached one month ago? I don't think many of us can. right? But when you put that into practice, no matter how much you put into practice, that part would remain in you. So it's very important. When we talk about discipline, we talk about doing the work, putting that into practice. That's part of the discipline. Are you with me? Now, okay. So, how do we form this discipline? There are two important areas I like to remind you. Firstly, you must be consistent in what you do. Consistent meaning you must be regular. Meaning you just, you just don't do it for two days and then forget it. Right? You, 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 you don't do that. Why is it important that you have to do it regularly, daily? Example, quiet time. Quiet time is a very good time we spend time with God because we allow the Word of God to speak to us and then we respond with prayers what the Lord has spoken to us. Now, quiet time is a very important spiritual discipline and it's important 
that we have to do it every day, right? Because God speaks to us every time. If you, you, you say, okay, I do quiet time today, but I, I'm so busy, I leave it for three or four days and do it again, now it's not going to work. Because you may miss what God is speaking to you at the most crucial time in your life. So this is important that we do the spiritual practice, the spiritual discipline daily. Why? In order to form a habit. Once a habit is formed, you are on a, a good foundation. So don't do it for three days and, and stop it for four days. Don't do that. So you have to be consistent. Now the second area I want to Im- remind you is in forming spiritual discipline, you have to be persistent. That means never, never give up. Just like feeding a baby, you cannot uh, feed a baby after a while, oh, too troublesome, oh, don't feed. Then what will happen? The baby will die because it will start to death. So these two areas, are in key, two keys, are important to helping you to form a spiritual discipline. Being consistent and being persistent. And when you do that, when you do that, you will form a good discipline and gradually, gradually build your spiritual foundation. Now, let me, let me bring it to a close. I mentioned three keys for spiritual maturity. If you hold these three keys, over time, you will mature and you will grow. <clears throat> First key, desire. You must have desire. Second key, you must be diligent in what you do. And the third key, you must form a good spiritual discipline. Now, you notice that I use the baby and I use a plant to describe spiritual growth because they're similar. Now, for baby, you feed the baby from young, first of all with milk and gradually with solid food. And over time, the baby would become a youngster, a teenager, and eventually an adult. And it's the same with the plant, with a food tree. You start with a seed, you start and then become a seedling, become a small tree, and then it grows into a big tree, begin to bear fruit. Now, do you notice in both examples, we can observe the growth, but we don't know when, we don't know how the baby and the tree grows, isn't it? That's over time, we, 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 we can see that the baby has grown into adult, the, the seedling has grown into a big tree. But how it grows is beyond us. Why? Because God is the one who will give the growth to them. It makes sense to you? Right, now. Do you know something? God also desires His people to grow to maturity. Because when we grow to maturity like His Son, God is glorified. He's happy, He's delighted to see his children grow into maturity. And not only that, not only that, you will become a blessing to others. Now, how do you know you will not be the next Billy Graham? How do you know that when you reach spiritual maturity, you will not be another John Wesley? You can, God willing, isn't it? Now, isn't that a good reason that we desire to grow spiritually, isn't it? Because not only for yourself, you become a blessing to others. And in times like this, we need many, many spiritual, mature, spiritually mature Christians to bless others, isn't it? Especially there's so many needs around us. But more importantly, when you are mature, when you begin to bear fruit, our God in heaven is glorified. So, Kingdom Life family, let's all have this desire in this year of growth to grow spiritually to maturity so that you and I can bear much fruit and be a blessing to others and make a difference in this world which so needed. So, I bless you with this desire. I bless you with this diligence and I bless you with this discipline. Amen? So we pray. Lord, we are thankful this morning that um, we share your word. 
about spiritual growth. Thank you, Lord. Through your word, you not only give us the why, the what, and also the how to grow to spiritual maturity. Lord, we know that when your people grow to maturity, you will be glorified through us. So, Lord, therefore, this is our desire to grow into more Christ-like so that we can become a blessing to others. So help us to grow, O oh Lord. And um, Lord, we sometimes we don't know how to start. We don't know how to maintain. We don't know how to move on. So Lord, we ask through the power of your Holy Spirit, you empower us, you guide us, and you lead our hands to walk this journey of growth. Lord, help your church to form good spiritual disciplines so that we can begin to form habits, good habits, so that gradually and steadily your church would grow to maturity. Lord, this is our desire. This is our prayer. This morning, we look up to you for your power and for your anointing. Thank you, Lord. Hear our praise this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Kingdom Night family. See you again.